Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Today I'm going to help you decide between how to choose between microspikes and crampons. How do you choose between the two? What are the pluses and minuses of each? I'm going to get to that in this video. How do you choose between microspikes and crampons? That can actually be a little bit of a challenging question, and I'm going to discuss that in this video. But before I do that, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, I always appreciate your subscriptions to keep my channel going, and also please leave me a comment and let me know how I'm doing, and also give me some ideas for other things you might want to see on this channel. Thank you very much for watching. So. The big question, crampons versus microspikes or other crampons, you know, what do you do? How do you choose between the two? Because perhaps you're looking to do some outdoor adventuring. Maybe you like to march around mountains or you'd certainly like to get into it. How do you choose? So I used to live in San Diego and I've done tons and tons of reading and I can never come to a clear conclusion. I mean, yeah, the, the crampons are hardcore outdoor. I'm going to do some real mountaineering with these claws on there. But man, how, how in the heck do I put crampons on my super light duty Merrill boots? I mean, that doesn't look very compatible now, does it? Enter microspikes and other traction devices like yak tracks, and all of a sudden the waters become even muddier. So here's my philosophy on choosing what type of traction device, whether it be crampons or microspikes, should you choose. See, when you're going on hardcore mountaineering treks, the choice is easy. You're like, duh, really? I mean, if I've got my Brunse hardcore boots. The micro spikes are like not even going to fit on my super huge mountaineering boots, let alone keep me safe. They require hardcore full on crampons that latch onto the boots. My Malay Everest boots that I use on Denali and all super high cold freezing mountains. Again, the only choice are crampons. Those are the only choices to get out there because clearly a thousand dollar boots loaded with very inexpensive micro spikes. I mean, you can see that the micro spikes wouldn't even fit on these boots. So that's a pretty clear choice, right? But what happens when you're hiking around the Sierras or the, the Cascades or the White Mountains or wherever? What do you choose? That's a little bit harder. So when you're out hiking and you're, you're deciding, do I need waterproof boots or not? That's a great starting point. If you need waterproof boots, you're going to start heading towards crampon land. So these are not waterproof boots at all. These are Merrill Moab ventilators, and I have used micro spikes on them, and they, they work quite well, and they're, they're pretty good. And I've used these in, in super cold conditions just to prevent me from slipping and eating it. But really, generally, I, I don't tend to use non-waterproof boots in icy and snowy conditions simply because it's really unpleasant the boots get soaked. So that helps you decide, all right, am I even choosing the right footwear, right? So micro spikes, definitely an option on the Merrells or other non-waterproof boots. But these boots on crampons, my boots are completely flexible. So if you have a completely flexible boot, crampons generally aren't going to work because the flexible boot will flex and the crampon will pop off and start dangling. So if you think you, that you have that possibility where your boots don't just have a little bit of a uh, what's called a shank in there, but they're completely flexible, crampons aren't going to work for you. So that is a, a big factor. Now, I've seen people hiking Gannet Peak, uh, Grand Teton, Tiwanot in tennis shoes, light tennis shoes through snow, and they did just fine. Did they take a big risk? You better believe it. So I'm not along those lines of risk. I, I'd much rather come back home alive than sliding to my death. So that's the first choice is, okay, if these are appropriate footwear and they're completely flexible, 
chances are crampons aren't going to be the best choice. Versus micro spikes, they're completely flexible. They're just rubber, so on a boot that is completely flexible, they're actually a really good choice. Now, I, I just said, do I choose these in wet, snowy conditions? No, but if that's what you have and that's where you live or that's where you're trekking, all of a sudden, this is a huge, huge advantage over having nothing on your boots. Now, these are sized uh, XL on size 11 boots. I've got another video talking about the micro spikes in general, so you can check that out, but clearly that works. So completely flexible, these micro spikes stay on the boot very easily versus uh, putting, trying to put these on crampons. It's just not gonna happen. Now, if I step up to my heavier midweight leather boots, they're still flexible, but there's a shank in them and it's a nylon shank and they only flex through here in the bottom. Now this becomes a little more challenging because I have climbed and hiked in these boots and I have worn crampons on them because I prefer the greater grip of crampons. I mean, as you can see, these one inch fangs will easily dig into anything. That's what all the mountaineers wear. And you just simply cramp that on there, flip these back, go on here, wrap the strap around, and you're ready to rock. So with these boots, they only have a nylon shank in them. They just have the toe flex, and I have used crampons on them, and it has completely worked. That said, I've got to carry around these things. Okay, so this is a major consideration between crampons and micro spikes is you carrying crampons, if you don't have the point protectors, uh, you need point protectors or the special bag or something to prevent the crampons from putting a hole in you or your gear. You can get these point protectors. They're really, really slick. I mean, I'll, I'll put a link below, so that's an option. So carrying these things around is mildly dangerous. Walking in them as well. I've heard stories of people tripping and then they come back with their crampon and put it right through their calf, one inch into their leg. Ooh, penetration wound, very nasty because you can get an infection. Microspikes on the other hand, will not hack your leg open. They won't hack your hand open. Just to illustrate how unsharp they are, I'm going to rub them on my face. Now, it's not terribly comfortable rubbing stainless steel, but I can rub that stainless steel on my cheek and I'm not going to be messed up. Now, is a cheek test smart? No, but this is a consideration of how you walk and where you're going. Do you think I'm really going to rub my crampons on my cheek? No way. So if you have that chance where you might be very stumbly and bumbly, the micro spikes actually might be a much, much better and safer choice for you. I've, I've seen people climbing San Gorgonio with crampons or micro spikes or nothing. That's a 11,000 foot mountain in Southern California. It gets snow, it gets icy on there. Uh, given the choice, if, I'm, if I was hiking in my waterproof leather boots, I would, if I needed them, I would bring the micro spikes simply because they're lighter and I, I don't expect too many problems on there. The hike up there is just a hike, it's not a uh, climb and there are no steep sections as I recall. However, I was on a, a hike this summer in the Tetons, came to it's like a 150 foot long section that was very steep on the trail was fine, but it was so steep. I didn't have my micro spikes. I didn't have crampons. I didn't have an ice ax. It was a big fail on my part. And I, I had to turn around because I wasn't willing to risk sliding and tumbling down. So choosing between micro spikes and crampons comes down to where are you going to go? What conditions do you expect? Are you ready to deal with the extra weight and difficulties of using crampons versus micro spikes? What's the likelihood of you falling and how far are you going to fall? Because if you really need an ice axe, chances are, and you're, you're considering 
You can use an ice axe and get away with micro spikes. I've done it on the Tiwanot, it works very well. But I would choose crampons simply because they give me better purchase and huge confidence. This inch, uh, inch and a half spike buries into the snow and I, I would say I've almost never slipped. Micro spikes on the other hand, I step in snow, they'll grab but it's like the slow motion. It's certainly better than being in boots and taking off and just dying but these will slide somewhat. My crampons I would say never ostensibly slide so that's the thing. Also there are different types of crampons. The universal rubber bale versus the specially designed, I can't get it out, um, uh, steel hook here. So that's another consideration as well. Also, the weight is a big deal. Let me weigh my crampons. I'll, I'll weigh my, uh, my ones that are more compatible with generic boots. So let me weigh those one moment. Okay. So these crampons that are compatible with just in, just any boot weigh one pound and 15 ounces. That's not insubstantial. You've got a pound on every foot and that is 878 grams. Compare that to my uh, micro spikes. Let me put those on the scale just to give you an idea of what these are weighing in at. Oops, one moment. Wait for my scale to clear. My micro spikes weigh in at 15 ounces or 444 grams. So a substantial difference in the weight differential here. But if I know I'm going to be going on steep 40, 50 degree slopes, I don't choose micro spikes ever. I have complete confidence in my crampons. That's a year mileage may vary, but if you want to come home and be confident and you, your boots are compatible with the crampons, meaning they are not, they're, they're at least somewhat stiff versus these that are completely flexible, the crampons are a very good choice. So hopefully this clears some questions up of when you use micro spikes versus when you use crampons. Also, when you step on crampons, it is easy to twist your ankle because you're standing on these platforms and it flops around. I have never twisted my ankle in micro spikes because they are so short. So that's a consideration too of what you're going to be walking on. Uh, the center bar can break on crampons. I've seen it happen. There's not a lot to break other than busting a link on these. So hopefully this has helped you decide between crampons and micro spikes. My name is Aaron Lindstow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And also support me on Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon. Thank you very much for watching.